Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming on here to our real estate internet show uh, with the 14 Moves Real Estate Network. Uh, my name is Sean Gorse. I'm licensed with Keller Williams Premier Realty here in the Twin Cities, and uh, you know we we really we host this show to uh, hopefully really encourage you a, as a home buyer or home seller, and uh, and really let you know some valuable tips whether you're looking to sell your house now or just at some point in the future. We know if we can give you tips to um, you know to help you gain equity in your house, that's going to help everybody in our communities. And so we want to do that. So, and Doug, if you would take a moment, say hello, introduce your uh, yourself a little bit about yourself uh, in real estate quick, and then we'll jump right into today's topic, which is uh, you know the top things you can do to prepare your house for a spring market. Our sellers get these uh, these uh, this list at 47. We're just going to pick out what we think are really the top 14. If they want the whole list of 47, like our sellers get, they can get that as well. So, Doug, you want to just say hello and maybe cover the first point there. You bet. Hi, Sean. And hello, everyone else. My name is Doug Gorris. I'm also licensed and uh, with Keller Williams Premier Realty and a business partner with Sean with 14 Moves. And welcome. And hopefully, some of the experience that I've had over the last 30 some years in real estate will help you when you're getting ready to get your house on the market and get it sold for the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. Good, good. Okay, Doug. So we were talking about you know when a buyer first walks up to the property that we would kind of sequence it that way where um, you know kind of easy to walk through you know the buyers first impression of course first normally is on the internet now and then having to do with um, actually walking up to the house when they get out of the car so uh, we kind of picked out some top ones here you want to go through those quick sure well I've got a just a couple to start off with um, and that was a good point Sean you mentioned about the internet a lot of people get introduced to your property on the internet now with some really good photos and so we want to make sure we, spay, uh, we pay special attention to those um, photos that do show up. Where I would like to start after that is when an actual buyer does show up at your property. What I've done in the past, and you can just do this yourself, you don't meet, need uh, Sean or I there now, but um, as soon as you're done watching this, as long as it's safe outside and it's uh, probably light out would be better than dark, is to go outside, stand across the street from your house and look at it and say, hmm, if I was a buyer, would I want to buy this house? Let's see now. Oh, gee, those shingles don't look so good, or that gutter looks crooked, or the driveway's got holes in it. Or So start taking a look from like as if you were a buyer. And mm -hmm. so that's going to be your first take notes. Start writing down some things. And uh, just kind of first impressions, the buyer's going to do the same thing you're doing right now. You're standing outside looking at it. You're looking at the neighbors on each side. You're kind of looking around to see what the, what the neighborhood looks like. Now you're going to start walking up to your house. Right, John? We talked about this a little bit uh, one other time. And as the buyers walk up there, sometimes the agent is with them. They're talking. But normally, they do notice things. And they'll notice, like, the sidewalk. What's the condition of that? What does the yard look like? Um, look at your front door. Does that need painting? Does it got chips in it? How about the door handle? I mean, just, I know these are the sound like kind of funny little things, but if the door handle is old and rusty or all the brass is worn off of it, replace mm -hmm. it. How about the uh, doormat? <laughs> That's a simple thing. If the doormat's kind of old and chunky looking, toss her out. Get a brand new one. Get a fancy one. Gee, you can buy a really nice doormat for like uh, 40 bucks at a, at like Home Depot, and uh, that'll make that. We're talking about first impressions here. That's mostly what we're talking about right now today is first impressions from the very moment the buyer shows up, and all the way in through the house. These are first impressions they're getting. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff, Doug. Because I think a lot of people, um, you know, some of these tips are. Uh, probably very obvious. Some of them you might not have thought of or we just kind of overlook because you're used to coming into your house every day and then it also some people have a front or a back door. Some people don't go to their front door very often. Realize they need to declutter. A few others we had on this list that we give to all of our sellers, be sure your front doorbell actually works. It's in good working order. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and like you said, the door and those kind of things. Replacing any of those fixtures, really easy fix, really inexpensive. And, and, and what I always, uh, what we, you know, with our um, network of real estate agents, what we're always coaching our sellers on, we want to see congruency in your house. So from the, you know, the condition of the front door, um, the doorbell, uh, you know, some other things being porches, steps, verandas, balconies, 
patios, other extensions of the house should be uncluttered, swept, and in good condition. We, what we're looking there for from the buyer's perspective is we want to see congruency that everything's neat and tidy and fixed up and polished just like you know when a dealer gets a used car and they kind of fix everything up on it, kind of looks shiny and new. All that the similar kind of concept there anyway is we want to see congruency throughout the house. That's going to lead to less questions in the buyer's mind when it comes to your property. They're going to go, oh, wow, throughout this house inside and out, these people have maintained the house. They've fixed up the house. Um, there's nothing I need to worry about. A buyer is often looking for a reason not to buy your house, right? So the more, the more things you can take away where the buyer has any question marks, that's what we're after here on the outside. Um, another one that seems kind of obvious, keep the yard mowed and raked at all times in the summertime if you're in a, uh, a northern climate like here in the Twin Cities. Same with snow, snow removal, ice all that kind of stuff you want to you want to keep on top of that uh, much probably you'll be end up much more frequently when you do all these things together your house is going to sell for more money in less time you know just these little tips and tricks can make the house sell for thousands of dollars more to the right buyer would you agree with that Doug from your 34 yeah. years in the yeah and just to, that's that's all uh, uh, relevant information and good information because uh, what's going to happen is, I agree with you, the buyers are going to be looking for a reason to put an X across your house so they can go on to the next one that they think might be better. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing that I've often counseled my sellers are um, is go to a builder's model home and kind of, pre you know, really take notice. Forget about the model home. What has that builder, now th this is a good builder that spends some time and energy and money on marketing their product. Their product is their model home. So as you're walking through, just notice what that builder is doing. Now I know you aren't going to be able to, your house isn't brand new and you're not going to have all the fancy furniture, uh, furnishings and, and things like that. Just take notice, color combinations, uh, just take notice of what they've done. There's usually not any dirt around. Everything's pretty well shiny and, and swept up and clean and, um, and decluttered. Of course, there's nobody living in that house. I'm not saying you should not. Uh, you, your house is never going to be um, looking like a model home. You, actually, you do want to look like it's lived in. So you do want to leave a few things around that a buyer can say, yeah, I can, I can, put, my, um, I can put that on the counter. I think that'll fit. So mm -hmm. things, some things like that. But the main thing is try to make your home as close to a model home look or feel uh, that you can. Also notice, um, what is the um, – I've often uh, thought of this in my own house because, uh, you know, uh, when you have a repairman over things like that, what does my house smell like? I'm so used to my own house. I wonder did did the did the fish fry I do last night affect it? Uh, so you got to when you're selling your house, these are big things. I mean, this, the 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 odors, smells, and such from your house. Not only visual, we're looking at all the senses: feeling, touching, smelling. So take that into consideration also. You might want to invest in, in not overpowering things, but things that neutralize or at least give a pleasant um, uh, odor to the home. Yep. Yeah, I agree, Doug. Yeah, we have, we have a list on here as well. Um, we have a list on here as well for uh, microwaving a small dish of vanilla 20 minutes before showing, <laughs> placing it and put it in an out-of-the-way place. you got to be careful with smells like that because you don't want, like you say, you don't want to, you want a fairly neutral smell, also a smell that um, you know appeals to a lot of people. You don't want something that's really going to turn off a certain group, you know, a certain segment of the of the buyers. And then as well, you want it to be something that's going to, um, you know, it's not, it's just going to be slight. And so it will take away, cover up some of those other order odors. A lot of people have pets or whatever. So and you, you and you want to do that enough ahead of time where if it's a little too powerful, you know, you can uh, you can air the place out a little bit, right, Doug? Yeah, Sean, and that does bring up, um, I've had buyers mention to me when I'm showing a house, I say, what is a seller trying to cover up? You've got one of these uh, Glade plug-in things, and you walk in, and whoa, it almost like bowls you over. It's almost as bad as cigar smell, even though it's supposed to be <laughs> be something that's supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, that people like. So be careful of that, I guess. So you want to do things in moderation, and mm -hmm. I like the vanilla in the oven. I've had people co bake cookies before showing so um, yeah, cookies, apple pie, vanilla, those are kind of some kind mm -hmm. of some of the more safe bets to go on for smells. Something that again, it's like you said, it's like these little things 
that actually can really affect a buyer emotionally. And we know people buy things based on emotion and then they back them up with logic. So if you can, the more we're doing here, and this is across all our marketing that we do for any seller, whether you're, um, you know, whether you're selling your house now or just getting it ready for the spring market or wanting to beat the spring market here, which is, you know, we want to draw the buyer in emotionally about your property. And so many of these things set the stage for that. If it's the smell, the presentation, um, another one here I had for, you know, um, uh, in the kitchen, a lot of people forget to do this, set the table for dinner. If you've got like uh, an eating kitchen area or a dining room area, you actually put out the dishes in the silverware, right? To actually, because again, in, in a buyer emotionally, it's tougher for them to visualize a house that isn't yet theirs. If you've got the whole place set for dinner with a tablecloth and everything, a lot easier for them to imagine actually eating in the house because you know it's already set, it's ready to go, and they can see you know how big the table is, how big the uh, proportions are, and those kind of things inside a home. So those are some more things for eating in the kitchen uh, uh, or in the kitchen that you can do that really kind of. And, and I'm just going here again off of this list. If you want this list, contact us. Uh, some of these things are kind of basic, and this is also why we have a we hire we hire a professional stager who walks you step by step, particular to your house before we put it on the market, and then we do professional photography with wide angle lenses and post uh, post editing of all the photos for hue and saturation and brightness and those kind of things, because we know how important the staging and the presentation of your property is to draw the buyers in either over the internet or even once they get there as well. Would you agree with that, Doug? Oh, definitely. And one other idea I just uh, thought of that our stager always stresses is decluttering your home. We, most of us in America have too much, I do, I have too much stuff. And I guess I, how I look at it and I tell my sellers is um, we're going to sell the sellers. That's why I'm here. That's what you hired us to do. So if we're going to sell your house, you're going to have to declutter at some point soon. So why don't you start right now decluttering? If you have to, rent a storage unit for a couple months. That's way cheaper. You're going to get way more money for your house because it's decluttered and having your stuff in storage than it is having it around. You're, you, it's, it's a good investment. So um, that, that that's probably one of the top things you can do over anything. It's one of the cheapest things you can do, and it gets you the best return. Yep. Yeah, we talk about uh, as well, you know, a lot of times you'll find you have a few pieces of unnecessary furniture, even just whether these things are to get your house ready to sell or to just make your house more livable and simplify your life. Um, often we, we try to cram a lot of furniture into a room, and especially if you are trying to, if you're looking there to get, get your house on the market and actually get it sold, remove that unnecessary furniture. You can sell it on Craigslist. Like, you, like Doug, like you mentioned, you can store it. Um, also, we're talking about storage, um, and this is something our, our um, stager goes through as well, put most of the family photos away, not all of them. You don't want to have bare walls. You don't want it to, to have nothing, and yet sometimes we'll, we'll see you know, where there's a whole bunch of family photos. Sometimes the impression that can leave with a buyer is that they're intruding on your space or your home or they're, you know, they think, oh, I'm going to be kicking this family out of this house. So you don't want to have too much of that. You want to have a little personalization there. Um, and then, you know, really removing that clutter from every room, what it does, of course, it makes your rooms look bigger. Uh, it it enlarges the, the actual space. So that's good to do at any time, I think. You know, just simplify your life. Have less stuff. And, uh, and then, of course, when you go to sell your house, then it's a lot easier. You don't have to spend three months cleaning up your house. Yeah, Sean, and one other thing that I, before we go here, I know we're, time is getting, uh, we're getting to the end of the clock here. Uh, what I also often counsel my sellers is the basement. And not so much if it's finished, although that, that it, it depends on how much light, um, regular light you do have coming into the house. The thing that I impress upon them, especially like in, the, I'll call it the laundry room, the mechanical room, where the furnace is located, the hot water, um, some guys especially, they like that area. They want to see what's going on. And if you got one little light bulb in there, uh, I would remove that one light bulb. I would get the little uh, thing you can buy at most hardware stores. It's got a dual socket. You screw it in and you put in two light bulbs, get 100 waters or higher and put them in there. I would even buy floodlights, spotlights, whatever. 
brighten that thing up. Do that in the garage. A lot of people forget about their garage. Uh, you got lights in there, and there are just one or two little lights up in there for this great big huge space. Let's light that sucker up because you want to make that garage look like they could put a semi trailer load of full of stuff in there, and that's why that's what you're up to. You want to make that the light does make it look bigger, and so that's what you want. Yeah, you know another thing that I see as you know I've shown buyers hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties. Um, another thing here that I was looking at on our list of 47: organize your closets. Remove unnecessary items, put them into storage. This is something most people would just like in their daily life is to actually have a closet where you have a little free space. <laughs> we tend to fill up the spaces we have instead of just leave some free space in there. Uh, most of us, we can take about if you take excuse me if you take your closet, you can probably remove about half the clothes from it because you. Uh, I'm sure you'd agree with a lot of people. You probably only wear um, half of those items most of the time. Anyway, remove those ahead of time. Again, here. We're looking for where the buyer can see the space that they're about to purchase. And you don't want to have zero items in the closet necessarily either. You want to have some, some items in there. It's just when you, when you take that time to do that, same goes with the, uh, doing the same thing like you said in the, uh, in the garage. And then um, in, the, uh, in the bathrooms too, we've got some good tips here. You know, kind of seemingly obvious things or little things or things that just don't cost you much money. Replacing the shower curtains and keeping them clean, putting out fresh towels and decorative soaps. To some people, this is probably going to maybe kind of sound silly. Other people who watch HGTV a lot, you might, you might go, oh, yeah, duh, of course I'm going to do that. It's so important to do, making sure they're even folded the right way. They're nice, fluffy towels. Uh, there's just that welcoming feel. Of course, you don't even need to leave the towels for <laughs> the next homeowner, and yet it's just something that really... Um, is going to help improve the sale price of the property. All these little tweaks together. Again, it's the congruency of the buyers walking through your house that in every room, in every closet, in the garage, inside and outside, everywhere they go, they're going to see the same things again and again and again, and that's going to give them a consistent feeling about your house. Um, this is what we're after. This is also why, for example, we do a listing storyboard. Uh, we have you complete like a, kind of what you love about your home, what you love about the neighborhood, the schools, the restaurants, the grocery stores, we do that as well from an emotional standpoint to draw, draw the buyer in emotionally about your house. So here when it comes to presentation and fixing up your house um, ahead of getting it on the market uh, or just living in your house in general, those are going to be good things. They're going to increase the equity of your house. Uh, and when the neighbors do this and they take this advice, it's going to increase the equity of their house, which is going to increase the equity of your house. So uh, feel free to pass along this video as well. Um, to anyone uh, you know who uh, might find it kind of useful. Doug, any kind of last parting thoughts there on really uh, getting your house ready here? Uh, no, the our, our list is even more extensive than we've talked um, just in this short period of time. The one thing we didn't talk about, and that might be uh, a good subject for another another uh, show, is a vacant home. So I know uh, you talked about, you know, don't leave the things vacant, and I've seen this so many times. I just showed one last week, and the house was vacant. And I, uh, I could all, I'd bet you 100 bucks if they just spent a little time staging that house with a few pieces of um, strategically paced, placed furniture, they're going to get a better offer in that house than it is the way it, we showed it. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I agree. Uh, you know, we've also I was here, I was noticing if you've got a family, if you've got – you know, younger children or whatever, another item that you can do is make sure you've got a game plan in place ahead of time of how everybody's, what job everybody's going to have in the family to quickly clean up the house, right? Quickly clean up the house, get it ready. Um, you know, you're in charge of your room, you're in charge of your room, nothing on the carpet, all the toys go in these bins. That kind of thing can really make it a lot less stressful for those showings. Um, when you're doing all this stuff right, it shouldn't take a very long time for the house to sell, especially if it's marketed properly um, with a proper marketing plan and negotiated uh, well like we do on our with our 14 Moves Real Estate Expansion Network of Agents. So thanks again, everybody, for coming on. We appreciate you uh, and uh, tuning in uh, here for our real estate show. Look forward to helping you, whether it's just building equity in your house or you know, if you want, if you're thinking of buying, selling, or investing in real estate, that you contact us. Contact us today. You can message us. You can visit our website. We'll have all that information um, here along with the video. So thanks again for coming on and look forward to uh, seeing you next month. Thanks.